people hear me yet? Yeah. Yes, people can hear me. Fantastic. So, <laughs> wow, echo. Okay. Um, tonight I've been given the opportunity to talk about a great subject myself. Um, but <laughs> I think you'll find that as I take you through these aspects of my life that I'm going to be talking about tonight, you'll discover that there's actually not that much of stuff that I've done and it's more what other people have done, and mainly what God has done. I'm going to be taking you through some ups and downs of my life, of my journey with God. Now, I can't really point to one spot where I became a Christian, but I think as we go through these points in my life, you might see how God has been shaping and changing me to become the person that He wants me to be. But that's something that we'll get to in a little while. First, let's pray. Father, thank you for how you've blessed each of us and how we each have our own stories, our own experiences, our own journeys with you. And I just pray as I share my own journey with you tonight that, that these words would be the words that you want me to say rather than the words that I want me to say. And that they would just bless all these people that are listening to me now and that, that it would um, be something that would touch them and it would help them to be close to you and know you in greater ways. Amen. Now, it's possible that some of you don't know me or don't know me very well. So I'll give you a quick introduction into who I am before we get into the meat of it. My name is Brendan James Raymond and I was born on the 27th of November 1992, which makes me 21 years, 5 weeks and 4 days old. Now, my parents are Samantha and Peter Raymond, both Christian and born and raised in Christian families. Um, in the second row there, and that's been a real blessing to me. Um, now, I was the first child that my parents had, but certainly not the last. One year, six months, and three weeks later, Rosie was born. Another three years, five months, and two weeks, and it was Kieran's turn. And Bessie came along one year, two months, and three weeks later. We had a pretty busy, noisy house sometimes. Now, as for me, I've got a bit of a variety of hobbies, skills, and interests. I'm into a lot of creative things, drama, writing, composing making clever things on the computer. I'm quite into music, which is what most of you probably know me for, seeing me up here on the keyboard and singing. And I actually did a Bachelor of Music that I finished up the year before last, which I then promptly followed up with a career in outdoor education. <laughs> um, one thing my friends learn about me quite quickly is that I'm pretty unpredictable. When I was in high school, people actually would have called me more of the science guy than the music guy. A lot of people were quite surprised when I did the Bachelor of Music and then others even more when I did what I've been doing this past year, but I guess that's just part of who I am. <laughs> now, I'd like to start our journey tonight by taking you back a fair way to when I was quite young. As I mentioned before, I came from a Christian family, you know, I can't remember a time that I didn't know about God, and for that I have my mum and dad to thank. And even back then, I probably would have called myself a Christian. You know, I believed in God, I believed that Jesus lived and died and lived again, and I believed in the Holy Spirit, and I read my Bible, and that's what being a Christian was, wasn't it? But there was one thing, there was one thing that I knew I didn't have, and that was a passion for God. And I had seen it in other people, I'd saw people, I'd seen people that were on fire for God, that were passionate about Him. And, you know, I wanted that fire, I had a desire and a will for that passion. So the first thing that I thought of was praying the prayer, you know, where you call the Holy Spirit to come into your life and it's a big transformational experience and everything changes, and that didn't really happen. Um, I must have prayed at least a dozen different versions of that prayer hundreds of times over many years and never had anything happen. You know, I went to church, I went to Sunday school here and at school, and, you know, that did nothing for me. I tried devotion books. There was one in particular, I can remember, that had this section where you wrote down each day um, where, how you could hear God answering your prayers. Those sections were always empty. I never heard God. So, you know, that wasn't doing much for me, and eventually I kind of gave up. You know, I still believed in God, but, you know, and... I still had a will for that passion, but I realized that, that it must just not be something that God had planned for me right now. 
So I kept living out my life as best as I could, all the way up through high school. But even then, when I thought I had nothing more than a knowledge of God, and not much of one at that, God had actually given me much more. He'd given me a desire, a will, to know more about Him, to have a passion for Him. And even if all you have is that will, that can still take you incredible places. Now, we'll come back to that story in a little while, but before that, I want to tell you about something that happened to me near the end of high school. Now, at first, um, if you're familiar with the Sunday school program here at this church, it's called Oasis. And at first there was Oasis and Pulse, and Pulse was kind of for the older kids. Then Oasis kind of diversified a bit more, and Pulse eventually became Dynamite. And at that point, Wendy McMenamin was leading the group. Eventually, though, the McMenamins left and went up to Queensland, and Michael took over the group. And at that point, things changed a little bit. The group gradually became S.W.O.R.D., the Spiritual Warfare Organised Response Division. And Michael's style of leading the group was a little bit different to Wendy's. Now, I had thought beforehand that I knew Bible stuff pretty well. I was a smart kid, I'd read a fair bit of the Bible, I'd, you know, I'd heard most of the stories, or at least enough of them to think that people had started going over the same ones again and again. And I did probably know a bit more than a couple of the other people in the group, but needless to say, Michael did a pretty good job of making me question basically everything I knew. He was really good at asking the questions that made you suddenly realise you had no idea what you were talking about. In a good way. He helped us to not just believe in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Bible because that's what other people had told us, or even because that's what the Bible said, but because we'd actually taken the time to look at it for ourselves, to really question why we thought the way we did, why we believed what we did, and challenging that if we couldn't find a good reason. Like 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, Test yourselves to make sure that you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need first-hand evidence, not mere hearsay that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. And it was a great experience and one that I still look back to and try to emulate in my own life. You know, I still do my best to look at why I believe what I do and challenge those beliefs. Because the thing is, if we don't challenge our own beliefs, then we won't be ready when our friends do, when the world does, if our family does. And that's really what this series is about, you know. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And we definitely won't be ready if the devil challenges us or if God challenges us. And if you think that God can't or won't challenge your ideas or beliefs, then maybe you need to be a bit more open to God changing you and challenging your ideas and preconceptions. Because He can, and He probably will. That time of challenging my faith, testing my belief, that really strengthened both my faith and my knowledge of God and who He was. For that, I have a lot to thank Michael and the whole sword group for, and a lot to thank God for. Now, I'll take you back over to what I was talking about before, trying to find that passion and fire for God. At this stage, I was at uni. It was one of the better times of my life. I felt like I was in the right place for me, doing what I loved to do. And actually, at some point during my first year of uni, I had suddenly realised that I had started talking with God rather than just to Him. You know, I wasn't so much hearing an audible voice, but there was a definite interaction there that hadn't been there at all before. You know, there were really good times, but I still didn't have that passion and fire that I'd been longing for and searching for. It was a bit strange when it happened. I still don't really understand it. It was a pretty regular day. It was somewhere in the first half of my second year of uni. Um, I can't remember exactly what was on that day. It was a weekday, but I was driving to Campbelltown for some reason, which is weird because my uni's in Penrith and I live in Norellan, and you don't really go through Campbelltown and get penned from Norellan. But anyway, I was driving to Campbelltown, and I was just, I can remember that I was just outside where the turn off to the Hume Highway is from the Norellan Road, and I was in my old metallic green Volvo, the tank, as we used to call it, and that's when it happened. I suddenly realised that I had that passion. I had that fire that I'd been longing for. If this is sounding a bit weird, I'll be with you in a moment. 
And it wasn't because I'd done anything in particular on that day. You know, I hadn't prayed a bit more, I hadn't read a bit more of the Bible, I hadn't <laughs> fasted the day before or gone into silence and solitude or anything like that. I hadn't done anything to get to that point. It was, you know, all of God and none of me. And as well as that passion, you know, I also had suddenly had this desire for leading others in Christ and helping them to learn more about God, as well as a desire to get baptised, which was something other people had talked to me about, about it to me before, but I'd always been like, I don't really understand why that's something that I need to be interested in. And I'd also had this strange feeling that I'd never had before, that I can only describe as the peace of God. I've only really felt that again once since then, at my baptism a couple of months later. But that passion and those desires haven't left me since. But here is where it gets a bit more complex, because that's not all there was to that. That's just what I understood at the time. Recently, I've had a few instances where God has only fully revealed to me the true implication and meaning of things sometime later. Now, one thing that may have struck you as a bit weird was how suddenly it happened. And it was quite sudden, you know, like that. But the thing that was sudden was the realisation, not the transformation. God had been working on me for quite a while now. Just under two years ago, God threw me a bit of a curveball. It was suggested to me that I might have something called Asperger's Syndrome. And before the end of the year, it was pretty much confirmed that I either did have or had had some form of Asperger's. Now, most of you have probably never heard of this before, have no idea what I'm talking about. What's he going on about? It's sometimes called high-functioning autism, and is what is called an autism spectrum disorder. Now, you probably do have an image of what autism is, and I need you to throw that out the window right now because it's not really helpful. Your image is probably of low-functioning autism, which is very different to high-functioning autism. Now, Asperger's is, is really complex, don't have time to give you all a psychology lesson, and I don't understand it well enough to give you one anyway. If you want to know a bit more about it, you can come talk to me afterwards, or come talk to my mum, she's actually done the research. Um, but the crux of it is this. Um, this is my easy way to explain it. Imagine that you're in a game, and you're creating your character. Now, when you get up to the stats that the character has, like strength and speed and stamina and so on, there's generally a set range that each point can lie between. And then each one is kind of randomly chosen somewhere within that range. And in better games, you'll have different percentage chances as you get lower or higher, and it's what we call a bell curve. Now, imagine that you have the stats for intellectual intelligence and emotional intelligence. Typically, general population, you've got a bell curve for both, more or less. In Asperger's, however, you're much more likely to get a reasonably high IQ, while quite a low EQ. Again, there are other things that affect everything from social ability to physical ability, so if you're thinking, hang on, this sounds like me, uh, there's a lot more to it, so don't get too worried about it right now. <laughs> but this is kind of the core of it, simple way to explain it for you. But going back to what I was talking about before, when I was wanting that passion, that was Asperger's, at least to some degree, that was being a bit of a wall to that. And it's taken me a long time to realise, but God has been helping me to overcome that for quite a while now. Slowly, surely, he put me near people and around people that helped to teach me just what being a good friend was, what caring for someone meant, what being passionate about something looked like. And they helped me to find that for myself, whether they realised it or not. So when we go back to that point when I had that sudden realisation as I was driving, the path to that point, the transformation process, actually took quite a while. You know, years in fact, maybe my whole life for all I know. We can often complain that God doesn't answer prayer, or that he doesn't work fast enough, or we can't see him working. There's a verse in the Bible that I found recently that I quite like. Um, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, that addresses this quite well, I think. It says this, I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. I can't think of a better verse to sum up my experience there. You know, it may have seemed like 
a long time to me at first when nothing was happening and I was trying so hard. But God was working through that whole time, building up to this one point when so suddenly, so swiftly, you know, I had this sudden realization. God often works on a much bigger scale than we ever realize. Now, there's a lot more that I could talk about, particularly on things that have happened in this past year, but I don't think enough time has elapsed since then for me to truly understand the significance of that, of what God was doing with me in that time. And I think that, that would almost be a whole speech in itself, and I think that Edwina might yell at me. Besides which, I only have so much time with you. My journey with God, however, doesn't stop there. Indeed, our journeys never stop until we die. Our testimony is never truly complete until then. This coming year, I already know, is posing many new challenges for me. At present, my income is basically un unknown. I have only one casual job, and I don't know how frequently or regularly I'll be getting work there. I do potentially have opportunities to be getting, you know, money through tutoring or busking or gigging and stuff like that, but I don't know how reliable that will be. And I get the feeling that God's going to be teaching me a lot about trusting in Him to provide and trusting that He knows what's happening even when I really have absolutely no idea. And I'm sure that if I did this series again next year, I have some very different things to talk about and some very different lessons to share. But for now, I'll stick to three. Even if you have nothing else, a will and a desire to be closer to God and learn more about Him can take you so far. Hold on to that. Question and challenge your faith, your ideas, your beliefs. Because if you don't, other people will and you won't be ready. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you, to give the reason for the hope that you have. And God doesn't always work on the time frame that we want, expect, or would like. But he is working, and in its time, if it's in his plan, it will happen. Now some of you, after all this, may be asking why. Why it is that I believe in God, or follow Jesus, or think that the Bible has some truth in there somewhere? Well, it's because of these things. It's because of these experiences that I've had, because of how God has affected my life. Because of these experiences, I feel that he is true. I know that he is true. And I believe that he is true. And I know that that isn't something concrete. It isn't something that you can measure or test or prove. It's a very personal and unique reason. But what I encourage you to do, if you're searching for answers, is to talk to people here. Troy and Edwina, our pastors, I'm sure will be available after the service. I'll be around if you want to ask me about anything that I've said. And there's lots of other people here with their own stories and their own experiences of God that you can talk to as well. Or do something radical and just talk to God. You know, I know He wants to talk to you. Now, I'm going to finish up in prayer and then I think Troy's going to come up and do some announcements and we'll be finishing up with a song. But again, if you have questions, please don't leave my hands. Thank you, Father, for this time we've had here. And Thank you for how you bless each of us. I pray that you would help us to each have more of a will and a desire for you and help us to each desire more and more each day to be more like you, to follow in your footsteps in greater ways. And I pray that you would help us, to, that you would surround us with people that would help us to follow your paths and, follow, and challenge us and pick us up when we fall down. And I pray that you would um, be with each of these people as, as they go out from here today and that you would just be talking to them and really talking to them about what I've said tonight and that that would be speaking to their hearts. Amen.